Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you for stopping by on this channel, all about wine education, really designed to help you get more from your vinous desires. So we are looking here at a, um, a presentation which is really for uh, those of you studying the diploma of the WSET. So we are looking here at California and we're on the final series here, series six, looking at uh, Central Valley, Sierra Foothills and South Coast. So it's actually just split into two. This is just a double header uh, with this part looking at an introduction to this area, plus the all important large Lodi AVA. So let's get rocking and rolling. Any questions, any comments, anything about sharing your desires and loves with these low dye wines, please do get in touch by commenting on the video. Central Valley to begin with. So it's an almighty large area highlighted by this map. It's entirely inland and you'll see it here. So we've highlighted some of the key parts, which we will be discussing, uh, some of them anyway, certainly low die, but very large inland zone. And we're going to have a look at its two valleys. So really, if you have a look here, and let me see if I've got my actual pointer, yes. Uh, so here is San Francisco and the San Pablo Bay. Let's call that the dividing line with the delta, because we have the Sacramento Valley to the north, and the San Joaquin Valley to the south. So that's what we're going to look at here. Uh, so highlighted on the left is the Northern Valley, the Sacramento Valley, of course, named after the city of the same name. So these two valleys, now the Sacramento Valley makes up the Northern half with about six to 7,000 hectares under vine, whilst the San Joaquin Valley to the south is actually over 60,000. So it's 10 times larger. Now the Sacramento River at about 447 miles long is the longest river located entirely in California. It starts in the Klamath Mountains and it flows south before reaching the Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta. It drains approximately 26 and a half thousand square miles in 19 counties. It is an important river, of course. So that's on this left hand side. Now we're highlighting the right map because that is the San Joaquin. It's the third longest in California, 365 miles long, one mile for every day of the year. And it's named by the early 19th century Spanish explorer, Gabriel Moraga, after San uh, Jochim. It originates high in the Sierra Nevada, flowing through the agriculturally rich Central Valley before joining the San Joaquin River in the Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta. The river is a major source of irrigation for the Central Valley vineyards and, of course, other crops. With its multiple amount of dams, it's one of the most diverted rivers in the whole of California. So more on the Central Valley. So here we have high yielding vineyards for the most part. These are generally on flat, fertile areas with day daytime rep um, temperatures, uh, sorry, regularly around 35 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius, resulting, of course, in very ripe grapes. Common varieties, French Colombard, Chardonnay, Muscat, Zinfandel and Merlot, but amongst many others, you know, Ruby Red, Ruby Cabernet, you know, all those as well. Big players here, of course. So the area is historically known for large scale production with Ernest and Julio Gallo Winery and also Bronco Wine Company uh, as the largest producer. Here is one of the Gallo towns uh, in Modesto. Now, the majority of wines labelled with the California appellation, so not a specific AVA, but just uh, the large California state will come from this area, specifically San Joaquin Valley, 
um, but it will not be labelled as Central Valley. It will come from typically around San Joaquin or Sacramento Valley uh, and normally be labelled as uh, California, very generically. But we turn our attentions very much to the Lodi AVA. This sits at the northern end of the Central Valley area. It's about 100 miles inland from the San Francisco Bay, San Pablo Bay complex. It's very large. We're talking about 41,000 hectares. It's about twice the size of vineyard area of Sonoma County. So it's really quite significant, uh, talking about 20% of total plantations. Very, very significant. And because we are, of course, uh, hosting this within the Central Valley, the logical thing to think is it's just going to be hot and like the rest of the Central Valley. However, it is not the case. It, it, it does have a Mediterranean climate, which can be warm to hot, but there is certainly a moderating effect on this area. And that's because we have cooling afternoon winds from both the San Francisco Bay and also the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta. So that's what you see here. We've got this large blue arrow, which is coming from the San Francisco Bay, San Pablo Bay. Uh, and uh, we know this can go up to the likes of Napa and Sonoma, but it can come down the delta here, as you can see, past Grizzly Bay. And this can come up into places like Sacramento, of course, uh, and Stockton. And here's Lodi, Woodbridge Lodi area. So, of course, it's going to experience that cooling effect. Now, flat land in the area with breaks between the north and south coast ranges means that those breezes will make it up to uh, this area, 100 miles in land. And these, whisk, uh, these kind of windy conditions are important in terms of giving a moderating effect, of course, to what would be an exceptionally hot climate, uh, but also reduction of things like fungal disease and frost due to air circulation. And it's an absolute respite, even if you are there in the hot day, you get this breeze, this feel. It is a really important respite for us humans as well. So you're now going to see a pictures of many very wonderful gnarly old vines found here in Lodi. So the vineyards here are typically found on uh, flatlands, which are free draining, and they are sandy clay and loam soils. Typically, this is the Royal Tea Vineyard. And you can see this wonderful gnarly old vine just here. Um, we do know that, of course, we're going to have a reduction in rainfall in this area because it is very far from the Pacific and also from mountain effect. So irrigation is widely used, typically from the Mokalumne River. So that's quite essential. And that's a river that runs through the AVA and is also a sub or nested AVA. This is the Rus Vineyard seen here with another wonderfully dramatic old vine. So um, let's discuss those old vines. Now, the oldest vineyards are planted to these, uh, these bush vines. There's one that looks kind of like a ladder shape with its cordons, which is quite classic in the area if you drive through Lodi. Uh, Woodbridge around the area, uh, or like this, the kind of gnarly bush vines that we do tend to see in other parts of the world as well. But of course, there are um, more modern productions here, and we'll see uh, cordon trained and vertical shoot position trellised uh, as replacement cane systems here, really because of the hope of mechanization on flat land, uh, labor forces is actually becoming much harder to get people to work in the vineyards. Uh, so of course they have to think in the grand scheme in terms of large production here with more cost effective processes. So of course Lodi is very well known for Zinfandel with vines that can be over 100 years old. And because of the sandy soils that one finds, you'll see in the picture below there, phylloxera has not been a problem in some parts of this AVA. So there are vines that are on their own roots and some that date back uh, around and beyond the phylloxera era. 
so if you are looking at a low die Zinfandel, range of styles produced, as you'll know with Zinfandel from one of my earlier presentations, it's a variety which does have uneven ripening. Uh, and there really is a big decision to be made by the grape grower slash farmer in terms of how it's brought into the winery, then how it's treated by the winemaker. So, of course, we can find Zinfandel, which has that typical sort of uh, overripe character. Lots of uh, things like raisin, fig, prune, very extracted. That's generally at the more commercial end. But you will find some absolutely spellbinding Zinfandels, which have more red or blue fruit, freshness, spice, very lovely expressions behind them. Um, typically, those Zinfandels from here will be uh, full bodied, medium, medium plus in acidity with ripe tannins. Um, and I mentioned red fruit, blue fruit, black fruit really does depend. Um, also, remember that this is a consistent area, right? You've got good breeze conditions, reducing fungal disease pressure. Frost is not so much of an issue. Uh, so the consistency here means that you've got quite a few varieties, Rhone varieties, south of France. So Syrah, Grenache, Sanso, Mourvedre, Picpoul, and even Viognier. Bordeaux varieties all uh, are grown here. Spanish, like Tempranillo. Graciano, Albarino, Portuguese Torriga uh, Nacional Tinta Cow, and even German Riesling and Gewürztraminer, and Italian Barbera and Alianico. Uh, there are parts of the AVA, certainly, which are close to the Delta, which actually are fairly cool. So you can find, of course, those white varieties. Chenin Blanc, for example, found in those areas amongst Petit Syrah. We'll see that uh, very, very soon. Um, so Grapes from Lodi may either be part of an inexpensive Californian blend made by one of California's large producers, and that's due to the actual quite low price of the fruit here, or it can be made with an AVA label um, and maybe a nested AVA. I would say the wines range from being acceptable all the way up to some outstanding examples. So we have inexpensive through to premium. Uh, and the expensive ones will come from the pictures I've been showing you of these old, um, typically actually dry farmed vineyards you find here uh, of bush vines. Look out for, of course, Ravenswood. Uh, we have uh, Alchemista vineyards uh, sellers, sorry, here as well as Michael David, amongst many others. Now, nested AVAs. So what I've got on this left hand side, uh, on the previous picture, remember, we actually have highlighted the whole of the Lodi AVA. Uh, but now we are just highlighting some of the nested or sub AVAs, uh, such as the Mokalumne River you see here with the superb Turley uh, wine production. So in 2006, the AVA of Lodi was divided into seven sub AVAs. The majority of vineyards lie within this AVA, the Mokalumni River. So it's where we find a lot of the old Zinfandel vines. It's about 50% of the production of Lodi AVA. Um, the AVA is named after the river or the mighty Mok, which is a 95 mile long river flowing from the central Sierra Nevada through Lodi and the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta before emptying into the San Joaquin River Stockton Deep Water Shipping Canal. Uh, so that's our location. Um, so do look out for these. This is the Bechtol Vineyard Sanso, which uh, I have tried um, multiple times. Uh, you'll see it on the Turley label here. So Sanso, Bechtol Vineyard, for example, and Lodi must be on there as well. And then these are the other ones which aren't really necessarily mentioned in your text, but I will go through them. We have the Jahant, uh, uh, which is just located north of the Mokalumne River. Uh, it's a small area, but it does have three and a half thousand uh, hectares. It's named after a gentleman called Peter Jahant, who settled in the vicinity of the small neighboring town of Acampo in the 1850s. Um, some wonderful loamy soils here, which are pinkish. And in fact, the AVA has been um, demarcated around that specific pinkish 
sort of clay loam soils, which are quite wonderful. Uh, the Consumnes River is above it. It's uh, a large area, but only with about 1,400 hectares, making it the smallest of vineyard planted area of all the seven sub AVAs. It's named after the river that runs from the Sierra Nevada down through the northeastern portion of Lodi before joining the Mokolumne River uh, at the southwest corner. Um, younger fertile soils here, uh, fertile, fertile silty soils are about two thirds of the AVA on floodplains and wetlands. And the remaining 40% here, or one third, is mid aged reddish gravelly clay loam in the San Joaquin series. You then have two more. So the Alta Mesa, which is just over 2,000 hectares, means the high table in Spanish. And it's quite a fitting description because the AVA's tabletop or table like topography, which ranges from 35 feet, so this is uh, not too high, up to about uh, sort of 30 meters. The soil here is mostly the San Joaquin soil series, clay, gravelly, and also reddish irons here. There's also then next door to that the AVA of Slauhaus, uh, I believe that's the English pronunciation of it. 3,200 hectares here, entirely within Sacramento County. The sub AVA is about 21 miles southeast of the city of Sacramento and about 22 miles north of Lodi. Uh, so its um, soils here are kind of reddish orange silts and sands and gravelly loams uh, and uh, very classic in the area. Then we have Borden Ranch and Clement Hills. Clements Hills is an AVA which is fairly large, bordering the Mokolumne River, about 8,800 hectares, uh, and it's second place in terms of vineyard plantations here in Lodi. It's a community, uh, that's where the name Clements come from, plus the topography here is hilly. The community was founded in 1857 by Thomas Clements. Uh, fine sandy loams here, which can accommodate own rooted old vine Zinfandel dating black to the 1920s. Borden Ranch is just underneath 5,000 hectares. It's actually bisected by Dry Creek, just south of the center. And this AVA is one of Lodi's seven sub VAs, which is both within Sacramento and San Joaquin. It's kind of on both. And that's with the bordering line here of the river. Um, so the AVA is actually an actual ranch, Borden Ranch. It's a well-known breeding ranch for thoroughbred racing horses and Hereford cattle established by Ivy Lewis Borden in 1864. Uh, so there you go. Uh, there is one remaining AVA, which is located outside of Lodi, sitting right on the delta. So this, therefore, is towards the west of the area. And this is Clarksburg AVA. So this is very close to that delta. Uh, so it has good hot days, but it does have much more of the effect of the breeze. And that's why Chenin Blanc here, as you can see from the bottle on the left, does very well. But we also have Petit Serra, Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc and Viognier grown here as well. Um, a lot of wineries that make uh, wine in this AVA don't necessarily label with Clarksburg. Um, they often label it with California. Look at the fairly large producer of Bogle Vineyards. They're based here and they tend to lead with California on the label. OK, let's take a look at this area, the Central Valley, and specifically focusing on the Lodi AVA. So Central Valley, that large inland part of the Golden State. And we're looking at the two rivers that form the sections of it. So first of all, in the north, the Sacramento River, which is 447 miles long, the longest entirely in California, of course. And then below that, the San Joaquin River at 365 miles, the third longest. And very important, that river more so for irrigation in that mass central valley. Both of them led to a confluence, which is the Delta, which then leads into the San Pablo Bay. And really, a lot of these areas here along the San Joaquin Valley and towards the Delta are on flatter land, fertile land with higher yielding productions, multiple grape varieties, and also many 
uh, hybrids are produced here as well. But the key AVA, which sits off here, is the Lodi AVA. There's San Pablo Bay, about 100 kilometers to the east is the Lodi AVA, which is large. It's about 45,000 hectares, twice as big as Sonoma County. It's a, a really area which is more Mediterranean, but cooled down. The winds which come from the delta reduce the frost and fungal diseases. There's sandy clays here, low rainfall, and old vines. Lots of old vine, different varieties, famous for, of course, those Zinfandels of 100 plus years. Now, the blue area here is a sub-AVA called the Mokilumna River, which is a very well-known sub-AVA, accounting for about 50% of Lodi. Uh, there are a few other AVAs that are nested within it, but we're going to go to a separate one outside, which is the Clarksburg AVA, southwest of Sacramento, known for Chenin Blanc and Petit Serra, and uh, not many label with Clarksburg. Most of the producers like Bogle here will actually label under California. There you go. Great. Well, that's the large part done here, really looking at Lodi. Please do try some of these superb Zinfandels and try and push the boat out. Don't just go for those £10, sort of 15 bucks styles. Uh, do look for excellent expressions that we found, uh, like Turley, for example, that I showed you earlier. There's some real wonderful, focused, pure Zinfandels, which just aren't all about sort of dried fruit characteristics. Any questions, comments, please do get in touch by commenting on this video below. And of course, if you do find yourself in the UK, come and see me at one of my establishments, maybe for a class, if you want to get all geeky, maybe for a glass at my wine bar, but more likely, of course, a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.